In this tutorial, we're going to take a look at the plate production feature. We're going to start by designing a simple conference badge template like the one that you can see on the screen. And this will contain a simple company logo field, a name field and a department field. I'm going to show you how we can apply some tool paths and then use the plate production feature to import a CSV file, which we've exported from a Microsoft Excel spreadsheet to create multiple badges automatically. This will contain all of the details and the tool path supplied, like the one that you can see here. But first we need to close out of this file, so we'll go to File, Close. And we'll start now by creating a new file. And we're going to be working with a single sided job with a width of 12 inches, a height of 8 inches and a material thickness of an eighth of an inch. We'll be zeroing from the material surface and the XY datum position in this case will be in the lower left hand corner. So we're going to start now by creating our conference badge template and later on we can use the plate production feature to create multiple versions of it. Now the first thing that we're going to do is create an outline for our badge. So we're going to start with a rectangle, so under create vectors we're going to draw a rectangle and in the form I'm going to specify a width of two and a half inches, a height of two inches, we're going to create radius external corners with a radius of a quarter of an inch and with that we can click create and close out of the form and you'll see the shape placed in the workspace here around the XY datum. So I'm just going to double click on that to put it into transform mode and I'm going to drag it up and place it in the corner somewhere here. So now I want to start thinking about the content within the badges and we're going to start with the Vectric logo. And this could be something that maybe hasn't been designed within the software and has been created in an external software package or where someone has sent you a vector file. So to do that, we'll go over to import vectors under file operations and from within the project folder, we'll see this vectric.eps file. So we can select that and click open and you can see that's now been placed on the workspace inside our rectangular vector. Okay, so looking at the vectors, we can see that they're all dashed, they're all individual vectors here. So before I do anything else here, I'm simply going to right click on the vectors and I'm going to come down to this option here, group objects, and that will convert the text into a single entity as opposed to working with individual vectors for each character. And the next thing that I want to do is align this text to the top center of our badge. So to do that, I'm just going to click again to put that into transform mode. And I'm going to hold down the left mouse button over this center point here. And you'll see that as you bring this in with the smart snapping switched on, this dotted line will appear to indicate that you're central to the badge. And then we can just move it up and I'm going to place it somewhere there. Okay, so I like where that's positioned. And now we are going to specify the name and department variables, which we are then going to use the plate production feature to autofill the name and department for each of the people that we have listed in our database. And for the next step, we have two options. So we could either look at using the draw text tool or the draw text within a vector box tool. Now, what we have to do if we choose the draw text tool is we have to specify a font as well as a text height for any of the characters that we want to display. And that means that anybody with a particularly long name might not fit within our badge area. And at that stage, we'd be looking at manually resizing each one to fit within the badge. So the easier option in this case would be to use the draw text within a vector box option. And this would mean that regardless of how long each character string is, it will always fit within this vector area. But what we need to do first in order to do this is to create two boxes for each variable. So one for name and one for department. So using the draw rectangle tool, I'm going to make sure I've got square corner type switched on and I'm going to come in and hold in down the left mouse button. I'm just going to drag that out. I'm just going to sketch in a rough rectangle. Then I'll right click to come out of the form and just double clicking on that. I'm just going to drag it down to make it slightly wider. And then I'm going to pick that up from the center again and I'm going to drag it down. But all the time I'll be holding shift to create a copy of that original vector and also control so it stays in line with the original. So I'll just bring that down to there and let go. Okay, so I've got two boxes now for each variable. So let's take the first box and I'm going to come back up to the draw text within a vector box tool. And you'll see once you enter the form that the bounding box dimensions will automatically update to reflect the vector that you have selected. So you'll see that we've got a width of 2.15 and a height of 0.514 inches. 
And now all we need to do is just enter the variables that will be picked up by the plate production tool for the text that needs to be changed within each badge. Now to create the variables, we're going to need to start off with a double exclamation mark and then enter the text that you wish to put in followed by another double exclamation mark because that's the only way that the plate production tool will be able to pick these up as variables. So for example, I'm going to start by typing in name and then I'm going to put the double exclamation mark at the end. And then we can come down and choose our font. So at the moment we're in true type font, so you could use that. But in this case, because I'm going to be looking at engraving this, I'm going to choose a single line font. And the font I want is Helvetica. So I'll come down in the list and select that. And actually I'd probably want it a bit bolder for the engraving. So I'm going to use the three line version of Helvetica instead. And we don't need to worry about the rest of the form here. We don't need to stretch the text at all. So we can carry on and look at the second box. So I'll select the vector. And in this case, I'm going to enter in department. So once again, double exclamation mark to open and then type in department and close with a double exclamation mark. And this time I want the text to be slightly less prominent than the name. So I'm going to instead use the Helvetica one line and you can see that that's now changed in the 2D view and I'm liking the way that that's looking. So now we have the basic design for our conference badge template. We can now look at applying some tool paths to them so that when we apply the plate production feature, the tool paths will also be reproduced. And by doing this, it can save us a lot of time. The next thing that I'm going to think about is the material. So I'm going to look at cutting these out of acrylic. So I'm going to close out the layout tool and I'm going to switch over now to the toolpath tab. And before I do anything else here, I'm just going to delete out the rectangular vectors that we use to create our text. So I don't need those anymore. We've created the text, but it will still remember the dimensions that we used in the create text within a box tool. And the first toolpath that I'm going to look at here is a profile pass that's going to be used to cut the badge out. So I'll select the external vector and we'll go over to the profile toolpath under toolpath operations. And working through the form, the start depth is going to be from the material surface, so at zero. Cut depth is going to be all the way through our material. So if we didn't know that, we could hit Z equals on the keyboard and that'll give us our eighth of an inch. And that's just pulling through the value that we specified in our job setup form for the material thickness. So it's remembered that and it's pulling that through with Z equals on the keyboard. Next, we're going to look at the tool that we're going to use. So in this case, I'm going to be using an engraving tool. So if we come into the tool database, we have this section here called engraving bits. So this is the tool that I'm going to use. So we can look over the settings here just to make sure they're safe and appropriate for our machine. And I'm happy with those, so I can click select to choose that tool. We'll come down and we'll choose where we want to machine these vectors. Because it's a profile cutout, we're going to want to machine outside of the vectors. Next, we'll come down to the option to add tabs, which I am going to choose to do. We're going to have one either side of these badges. And I do know the exact dimensions I want to make the tabs in this case, just to make it easier for finishing. So the length I want to be 0.1 of an inch and the thickness is a bit more complicated here. So I want this to be a third of an eighth of an inch, but we can use the software to work out the decimalization of that. So we can enter in Z which represents the eighth of an inch, our material thickness. And then we're going to enter in divided by three equals. And you'll see that the software has now automatically calculated that for me. So now we've got the dimensions of our tab, we just need to select the placement. So to do this, we're going to click on edit tabs and we're going to bring the cursor over into the workspace and you'll see that it's changed to indicate that we're placing these tabs. And as we move on to the vector, you'll see a tick appear next to it. So that indicates that if we Left mouse click, we can place one there and one opposite. So just one on either side, just hold it in. And then we can click close, to select that placement. We don't need to worry about this section of the form. So we'll call that cut out and we can press calculate. So we can see our toolpath displayed in the 3D view here and we can just go ahead and preview that. And now we're going to take a look at engraving the text with the diamond drag tool. So we use this option here to tile our windows horizontally and we're going to go ahead and we're going to select the name option and holding down shift we're also going to select the department option so we've got the two selected. And then we're going to come over to the toolpaths tab, close out of the preview toolpaths form 
and we're going to be using the quick engraving toolpath and the toolpath operations. And the first thing that we're going to do in the form is select a tool. So we'll open the tool database. I'm going to come under the specialist tools here and I'm going to select the diamond drag 90 degree tool. And this is perfect for engraving because these come spring loaded so you can engrave over uneven surfaces. So once again, we'll check over the settings to make sure they're safe and appropriate. And we can select that. Here we can apply a depth or pressure. So we're going to go for 0.1 in there. And now we need to choose whether we want an outline only or whether we want to fill this. Now we can't use fill in this case because the text that we're working with are single open vectors. So we'll stick with outline and we can come down and we just need to give this a name. So just call this simply text and then we can click calculate. And once again, you'll see the toolpath displayed in the 3D view. So we can maximize that. And then we could go ahead and preview that. Okay, so that's how that would look if we were to machine this out. So we'll put that back in Z, we'll tile our windows again. And I'm just going to close out the preview toolpaths form. And next we can look at the company logo. So we'll pick the Vectric text and we'll go back into the Quick Engrave tool. We're going to use the same tool again, the Diamond Drag 90 degree. And we're going to apply the same depth pressure, so 0.1. But this time we're actually going to use the fill strategy. Specify a step over. So in this case, I'm going to go 0.025 in there. And then we can choose whether we wanted to offset that within each of these characters or whether we wanted to instead use a hatch fill. And I'm going to use that this time. So underneath we can specify the angle. So we can go 90 degrees, 45 degrees. Uh, so I'm going to use 45 degrees in this case. And then we can give that a name. So I'm going to call this one Vectric Text and simply click Calculate again. Again, we can see the preview in the 3D view. Go ahead and run that now. So you can see the hatch angle in there. And with that done, that's our basic badge completed. So I'm just going to close out the preview now and I'm going to come over and maximize the 2D view. And I'm going to choose this option here to zoom active view to draw in limits. So now we can look at applying our badge within the plate production tool. And first I'm going to switch over to the drawing tab and I'm just going to box select from left to right. So click and hold on the left mouse button, everything that we have there for our badge. And under offset and layout, we're going to choose the plate production tool. And that will open up the plate production form in which we can set various parameters and settings which control how the plate will look. So let's work our way through the form where we can set various options for the data that we're going to import for the production of badges. And we'll start with the sheet size. So that's automatically picked up the dimensions of the workspace as we set in the job setup form. But if we wanted to, we could change that, but it's okay in this case. Our plate size has automatically picked up the dimensions of the outer vector for our badge. And next in the form, we get to sheet margins. And this is where we can set the dimensions for the margins around the edge of our sheet represented by the workspace here. So we can enter the value that we need in here. We've got this checkbox for equal margins. So with that selected, any value that we enter into here, so, so we put 0.2 of an inch, that would mean that we have a 0.2 inch margin all the way around the sheet. But if I then uncheck equal margins, you'll see that these grayed out boxes for the top, bottom and right have now become editable. So you can manually enter any value into these. And in this case, I'm going to go with equal margins at a quarter of an inch. Next, we have the spacing. So this is the space in between each individual plate in both X and Y. So here I'm going to put in the spacing of an eighth of an inch from left to right. And I'm also going to go with an eighth of an inch from the top of the plate underneath to the bottom of the plate in the row above. Then we get to number of plates. So this is where we specify how many we'd like in both X and Y. So you can either manually specify this here or you can use the option to auto calculate. And that will fill the sheet in based on the dimensions of the plate, the sheet, along with the settings for the margins in here. Then we've got the option for create tool paths. And as we've already created the tool path in for this badge that we're going to replicate, we can leave that switched on and it will pull through all the tool path in for the copies that we make. 
And now with the left side of the form complete, we can move over to the right. And the first thing that we need to do is to select the information that we're going to want to import to apply to our variables, which are listed here in the variable assignment section. So it's picked these up because of the double exclamation marks at the start and end of the variable. Now we also get to choose what kind of information we're going to be importing and what the separator value is going to be. So the information that we're going to be importing here, it needs to be in plain text format. So we've taken an Excel spreadsheet and exported that as a CSV file. And a CSV is a comma separated value file. So we're going to use this option here to import from file. And you can see in the project folder, we have the Excel spreadsheet that we've exported out to a CSV file that I mentioned just a second ago. So we can click open to select that. Okay, so here I can see that the data has been imported into our plate production tool. And the separator which the software defaults to is comma. And so you really need to check that the separator used in the imported file matches the separator selected in this form in the software. Okay, so if it wasn't comma, it could be tab, semicolon or space. But in our case, it's comma, so we can leave that selected. And you'll see that in between each of the variables here, you'll see commas. So if the software wasn't looking for a comma to use as a separator and it was looking for a tab, which isn't included in here, you'd just end up with a long string of characters. Okay, so moving on to the next option, first row is column names. So we just need to check that the first row included in here is the column names that have been pulled through from the imported database. And you can see that in our case it has, so we've got first name, surname, department, age and sex. And if we then look down the list in each row, we can see that that matches up. So we've got Brian for the first name, Dent surname, department, product development, age 24 and male. So I'm going to select that there. So it recognizes the first row as column names. And moving down, the software is telling us that we can create 14 plates set on these parameters. And then underneath we have the variable assignment. And this is where we can assign one of these fields to our name and to our department. So to do that, we'll first select one of the variables from the list. Underneath, you'll see this drop down box called assign to. So if we click on that, we can then select one of the column names from our database to assign to it. So for this one, we're in names, so we want first name and that will have assigned that. And then we can move on to department and we can choose department from the list. And with that, that's really all the information that the software needs to calculate all of our badges using the plate production tool, along with the toolpaths that we've already created. So let's go ahead now and click calculate in the form. And what the software will now do is create all of the individual plates using the different information within our database. And now that's completed, we're done with this. We can close out of the plate production tool. And we can see now on the workspace that it's replicated all of the badges with all of the information that we imported from the CSV file. You can also see if we click off that it's created the margins down the edge of our part and also in between the individual plates. And you'll also notice that the text for the names and the departments inside each individual badge has been automatically sized to fit within these individual badges. And that's thanks to the fact that we use the text in a vector box tool on the original badge that we then copied out to the plate production tool because that will constrain the number of characters that we have on each badge into the area of the box that we used to base the vector box on. So for example, we can see here for Peter, accounts is much larger than for Linda product development because as there's more characters here, it's had to resize product development to fit within the same area. You'll note that on the screen at the moment, we've only got 12 badges. And if you remember when we were in the plate production form, it actually said that we'd be creating 14. So to view these, if we then go over to our layers tab, you'll see that the software has automatically created a second sheet onto which that additional two plates have been placed. So if we now switch off sheet one and switch on sheet two, and just go over to the toolpaths tab and draw all the toolpaths for a second, you'll see that it's placed these additional two onto a second sheet because it couldn't fit all 14 onto the one sheet 
based on the parameters that we set in the plate production form with the margins and the gaps between the plates. And the same here actually applies to our toolpath. So if we have a look at our toolpath list here, we'll see that we've got the original toolpaths here. So we've got cutout text and vectric text. And then underneath, we have these repeated, but with an S1 in front of them. So this S1 stands for sheet one. So here we've got S1 cutout. So that's all of the cutout toolpaths on sheet one, all of the text toolpaths on sheet one, and the vectric text on sheet one. And then because we've got the two sheets, because the two that couldn't fit onto the one sheet, we've got another set which relate to the toolpaths on sheet two. And so with all the toolpaths created for machine in these badges, at this stage, we could look to save out these toolpaths to send to our machine. To learn how to do this, please refer to the dedicated toolpath saving guide tutorial that you can find in the related video section for this tutorial. And with that, we've now come to the end of our plate production tool tutorial. And the only thing left to do here is to save the project file to be accessed later. So I'm going to go to File, Save As, and we're going to call this plateproduction.crv, and we're going to save that to be accessed later from the project folder.